Okay, I think we're rolling. All right, this is an interview at the New York, or at the Buffalo New York County Historical Society in Buffalo, New York. It is the 16th of May, 2007, approximately 1.15 um, p.m. The interviewers are Mike Russell and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? My name is Chester George Robinson. Uh, I was born in Buffalo, New York at uh, Miller Filmer Hospital in 1943. My birthday is February 8th, 1943. What was your educational background prior to entering service? Uh, I had grammar school and I had worked, I mean, I had uh, four years at Seneca Vocational in ele electronics, electrical. Okay. Um, did you work at all before you entered service? Yeah, for about, uh, I, I got out when I was pretty young. I got out at uh, high school in June when I was still 17. And I worked down on Lower Terrace right at the uh, beginning of uh, the, the uh, Skyway at the time uh, for a printing outfit, green printing. And we used to print, uh, actually we printed uh, uh, books for uh, Scott Aviation and that. How to put air packs on that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you enlist? Yeah. I, uh, a friend of mine, uh, a couple of guys I hung around with went in the Navy, and this other guy that I knew was in a service in, uh, in the Navy, and he happened to be coming down the street one day with his uniform on, and he had an FT insignia. I asked him, it looked like a range, it looked like a range finder of some type, and I asked him what else he said, fire control. I said, oh, I don't if I want service, I wouldn't want to be an A, I wouldn't want to fight fires. No, no, he says it's not that, it's radar and computers and stuff like that. So when I joined the service, uh, I, uh, I asked for that. And with my background in Seneca, it, uh, it got me that rate. Mm -hmm. um, when did you enter service? Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, it was 26th of January. 1961, I think, I can't see, it was 60 or 61. Mm -hmm. uh, I was still 17 and it was a matter of days before I turned 18. Mm -hmm. And my mother and father didn't want to sign, but I said, look, if you don't sign now, in two weeks when I, or a week whenever I turn 18, I can sign for myself. And that adds me another, added another year out of my service, so they signed. Did you ever hear in Buffalo? Here in Buffalo. It, Downtown and um, at the old post office. Now it's EC. Yeah, I look at yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, where did you go for your basic? Great Lakes. What was it like there? How, how had you ever, prior to that time, been away from home? Uh, um, a couple months. of weeks, once in a while, for a Boy Scout camp, and that mm -hmm. was it. We went to. Uh, I can remember going to Camp, Camp Barry, which was the first place you went when they uh, processed you. And you got shots, you were up in the morning and uh, early, and they can remember coming in and taking this, if you remember the rib, rib garbage cans, the real heavy ones mm -hmm. that they had, well they used to take a Coke bottle, Coke bottle and spin it around the inside. Boy, I tell you, mm -hmm. at about 4, 3, 5 o'clock in the morning, that wakes you up real quick. Mm -hmm. Anyway. How, were, how long were you up at Great Lakes? Uh, well, I went to um, went through uh, boot camp. I was in uh, camp. I mean, uh, Company Fifty Nine. I remember going through that, and uh, I think it was eight, eight or twelve weeks. I can't remember what boot camp was, but I stayed up there because I went through A school for fire control, which was right up there. And how long was that school? Uh, Good question. I don't know. I, I I think it was quite a quite a while because between I went I went to service I went in January, right at the end of January, mm -hmm. and I didn't. It took the whole year just about to between boot camp and going to school because I caught up the ship come back from the med in December of that same year. So it was about ten months for this boot camp in in. Uh, School together. Well, 
What was your training like at school? I mean, what did you learn? It was book learning. I mean, it was just like high school, basically. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the beginning, they had wrote what they call, I think they call it rotors and mo motors and stuff like that. And it was the very same thing that I learned at Seneca. So, I mean, it was really easy for me because I'd already went through it until I got into the, uh, and they were just getting into transistors and stuff like that that, you know, now we're mm -hmm. past mm -hmm. that. But they were just getting into transistors and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and we were learning that stuff. It was technical. It was, uh, it was a good school. Um, but it was, a gun, it was a gun school. I mean, that's what it was, I'm an FTG. There's FTMs now, and I don't even know what else they have out there now. Uh, it was a good school, very good. And you went from right, right from there to your ship assignment? Yeah, well, I actually, what happened is I went from there to, uh, to Norfolk, and I was a mess cook for like uh, three weeks waiting for the ship to get back. The ship ran into a heck of a storm. Uh, and uh, actually, I'll tell you how bad the stone was. It had three inch mount on a, on a forecastle and it bent the barrels. That's how bad the, the, the uh, stone was. I guess it was really rough. They have pictures, some of the, it's on the, uh, online and at the Newport News uh, website. Mm -hmm. And showing, showing the Dexter, this Dexter go and took pictures. He thought of it, was smart enough to think of it. It was tough. You could see it breaking over the first turret, in fact, the, the waves in it. It was a pretty rough storm. Mm -hmm. But I had must cook for three months, uh, three weeks, I mean, before I, I met the ship. And then when I met the ship, I couldn't believe it. I walked on that dock, and it just like it was forever. Mm -hmm. it was 717 feet long, I just, I was just amazed. Just amazed how big it was. Because I had seen destroyers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Nothing that big. <clears throat> what was your duty station in? And the well, in the beginning, I was uh, the uh, I was the youngest guy. And well, let me tell you a story. I, you know, the FT. Once I got into the FT gang, you know, you're the youngest guy. So uh, this guy named Clevenger, second class, he tells me, he says, uh, "You're the youngest. You go down and get to make the coffee." Okay, so I go down. Seventy cup pot of coffee. Get the water, go up there, and make the cup. Get the guy Clevenger takes takes makes the first takes the first cup of coffee, and he spits it out. It was salt water. I didn't realize it. <laughs> it made it with salt water because it was fresh water, salt water spigots downstairs. So whatever. Anyway, uh, I was a one JV talker on a bridge, which was talking to whatever the captain said. You repeated it, and you talked to whoever. If he wanted you to talk to him, well, we wanted you to talk to the folks, well, you had to talk to him. And in the beginning, I was raw. I mean, you know, he'd tell me something, and I'd say, uh, repeat. Uh, and, and about the second time up there, he, he pulled me aside afterwards, and he, you know, after uh, General Porter was over, and he said, uh, Sailor, he says, I want you to get a hold of that Blue Jackets manual, and he says, I want you to study it. He says, I want you to know it from cover to cover. He says, I don't want to have to repeat anything. He says, there's going to be times when I don't have time to repeat. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did, you know, and, and understanding some of the terms, like, you know, they ask you how was the, you know, if they drop anchor, they ask you how the anchor was tending, you know, because it would twist. And it's say like 10 o'clock with a light string, sometimes with a heavy string. You had to be careful because you could literally snap the chains, you know, and hold them. Mm -hmm. so, and, and it was different things. It was the engine room, and, and if the helicopter, uh, was taken off. They wanted to know, you know, and they'd have to find out what the uh, the wind was like, which way it was going, and stuff. You were you were in touch with you were in touch with every every department on the ship, and it was nerve wracking in the beginning because I didn't know what I was talking about. But as I went up there, I I, uh, I got better. At least we didn't hit nothing. So, I mean. <laughs> so what were your general duties? Uh, once you got a we had a, uh, once I once after I got done with that and um, then some uh, some somebody else coming to the division with less time than me and I said look I'd like to get off it I, I didn't mind it I mean the thing mm -hmm. about going up there on a bridge was you knew what was going on constantly mm -hmm. you know I mean if we were highlighting to somebody they tell you who was coming over you know half the time when you're if you're someplace else they you you knew they were highlighting bringing somebody over from another ship but you didn't know where they were this is mm -hmm. when you knew everything. And then after uh, after that, I went uh, started working as an FT. I, I worked as an FT before uh, 
<coughs> but I, when you had general quarters, that's where I had to go off and be the one JB talker. But I, I went down. You start maintaining the equipment, you know, the radar, the computers, which it's just amazing the size of those computers. They're about the size of that heater. That's what we had for the three inch. They were all electrical, mechanical, primarily mechanical. I mean, mm -hmm. that was for just for the three inch. Like I say, half of those table for the eight inch. They were uh, monsters. But they, uh, they did no, you the said the uh, Newport News out of her class was the most quote modern of the. Of yeah, the, the three. What, yeah. what made her different than the others? Well, she had the eight inch uh, rapid fire, uh, eight, I think it was eight inch 55 rapid fire uh, guns. Mm -hmm. And they only they had the projectile and the cartridge or a canister, uh, and the canister had everything in it. So once they put the projectile in and then they put the, the brass canister in, it was ready to fire. Whereas the other ones are, uh, had uh, wadding and they put the projectile in, they put wadding, the bag, mm -hmm. uh, powder and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it took them longer. And then uh, once they fired the, the projectile, the brass canister, which stood about six or seven foot tall, uh, would be ejected out the front of the uh, the, the turret, and we had these ca uh, catchers that would catch them. We never fired an anger. We we sunk a ship or two, but uh, you know, from practice, we actually sunk a ship. But um, until I went over to Vietnam later on, mm -hmm. you know, was not, we didn't know. I was scared during these Cuban crisis. I was on watch when I came through. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us about that? That sounds pretty that, interesting. Uh, well, I was in Damac, Virginia, and going to school for for some radar or something. I can't remember what it was, in fact. And I really didn't, was, knew, didn't have any idea what was going on. But somebody came in the classroom and he said, uh, everybody go back to your barracks, pick up your stuff, uh, see back and get out of the bus that will be sitting out in front of your barracks. So I did, and, and it was uh, the school bus sitting there, and we, we all got on it. And we were looking at each other, because nobody had, had any idea what was going on. And we went through Norfolk, and Norfolk was a ghost town. I mean, literally a ghost town. There was nobody there. We went on the base. There wasn't one ship on that base. I couldn't believe it. I, and I'm saying, what, what's going on? I, I just couldn't believe it. The only ship that was there was our ship. And... Uh, I got to the ship, I got on, about a half hour, 45 minutes later, it was ready to go. It had nothing to do with me, they were just, they would have left me if I didn't get there on time, because mm -hmm. I was nobody. But, uh, I don't know who they were waiting for, but whoever they were waiting for, and we took off. And then that's when Kennedy come on the uh, television as we were going out. He said, no, well, you saw him on the television? He was on television, ship? yeah, on a ship. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he, went, he had a speech about Cuba, instead of Cuba. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, I said, hey, I didn't join anybody to get killed. I just wanted to have a good time, right? <laughs> you know, this is a lot of baloney. But anyway, I had no idea what was going, really what was going on. And then they started explaining that they had pictures and stuff like that. And uh, so that we were we were actually in charge of the Cuban crisis, our ship, because we had the second fleet flag. The admiral was aboard our ship, you know, and, and he ran it. We had all the electronics and that. And he was in touch with everybody. So. Uh, and then they said that we were coming alongside, and I, I took some pictures, and you know, maybe it was illegal, but I took pictures of the of the ship. In fact, they were the very same pictures you see on that, what's the name of that movie, 13 Days or something? Yeah. And I told them, well, I, I've got the very same pictures with my camera. I took it, I had an Argus, and I was at Sky One, which is the, the front, the uh, wasn't a, it was a five inch uh, director up in the front, right above uh, the bridge. And I happened to be on duty and happened to have a camera. And I never took, I bet you I didn't take 10 pictures of board ship. But I just happened to have that camera. And, and then all of a sudden they said, we're coming alongside of a, a ship that's got some missiles. And uh, we pulled alongside of them and told them that we had a guy down on, fly, on a flying bridge, which was above the regular bridge. And uh, he, had his, he had a loudspeaker and he told them, to, in Russian, he told them to remove the... Uh, cover with the missiles and they come running out of the ship and flip them back and you could see the missiles along the kind of side there. And uh, was this a Soviet ship? Yeah, it was a Soviet ship, but you know it had missiles on, on either side of them. 
supposedly heading back to uh, Russia. And uh, then what happened? Then, well, we followed him. We followed him for a little bit, and then we, uh, in fact, our, I think, the, and I, in fact, I know our, the, the, the helicopter. Then that 13 days in October, whatever it is, come off of our ship. They said uh, never mentioned our ship. Why they never mentioned Newport News is beyond me. I really don't understand. But they never really mentioned that. But we were we were ahead of the, uh, the second fleet flag. The admiral was aboard our ship. We were running the show. We were. And they never mentioned in Newport News, but that's where that helicopter come from. And I think it was a destroyer. In fact, I have a, it's, a lot of that's on our website, the Newport News website. Because this Dexter Gold has got all kinds of these, you know, it's got every, everything right down. As they, you know, as that ship, whatever, whenever he was aboard that ship, whatever would happen, he's got it down. And, uh, and the YouTube, too, I think he put it on. But... Uh, they never mentioned our ship. Why they, they never, why they didn't, I don't know. But it was, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then we peeled off after, I don't know, we were probably alongside them for like 45 minutes an hour. And uh, at first they weren't going to weren't gonna uncover it. And then we trained and we moved the 8-inch guns over on them, which, <laughs> which would have, you know, completely destroyed them. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But anyway, then mm -hmm. they complied. But I was very nervous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you were on deck and what you could watch? Yeah, I was watching. Well, I was up on what the director. Uh, mm -hmm. In other words, that dish, I don't know if you ever see it on that dish oh, yeah, that locks okay. on planes mm -hmm. or depending on because the five inch would either do the, could, could be short bombardment or it could also be plane uh, intercept. And um, Sky One was the one that they had man, which was because it was Sky One, Sky Two, Three. Five. I uh, know there's four. There's only four. Sky one, Sky two, three, and four. Uh, and they took care of the. They, they were able to take care of the, the three inch and the five inch. And uh, then we had these other ones for the, the, the eight inch, big tall ones. But they were strictly by show. How, how close would you say you were to the? How, how close? The Soviet ship. A couple hundred yards at most. Mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, we could easily shut up what they usually shot what they call a monkey fist over. We could easily highlight it, up, no problem. Yeah, we we were very close. <clears throat> All right. Um, how long were you on duty station there? What do you mean? Um, Board the ship? Um, uh, off Cuba uh, with the missile. Oh, I see. Um, you know, I, I think I'm thinking three or four days. Um, yeah, I think three or four days. And then, uh, then we actually went in Puerto Rico one time. But, you know, we, uh, left, you know they, they still had all of the ships. The other ships were uh, out there. <laughs> I know a friend of mine, a guy that I worked with, Roger Bogus, uh, was aboard a uh, destroyer. And they chased a Soviet sub, which was around. They chased them. They had them. They just couldn't get them to surface. And they uh, they followed them for like three or four days. I, I can't remember the name of the destroyer that it was on. He was saying that they followed them and followed them, and they were trying to get. All they wanted them to do was surface, mm -hmm. just to prove that they. But he they didn't. He wouldn't surface, and they finally lost them. But it was scary. I tell you. What was your quarters like aboard ship? We were, we, the, you mean we just slept in there? Yeah. Yeah, well, was our, we were on, uh, I think our, our compartment was in number three mess deck. And uh, when it got real rough, we usually got extra food, usually on somebody's rack because it had been flying down the, <laughs> it would come flying down the uh, hatchway. Because, you know, if, if the guy had a, a tray or something full of food and the ship rocked, which of course they always did. Down the hat. So the, we used to put the youngest guy right by the the uh, ladder. So if the food did come down, <laughs> he got it on his rack, not mine or his, somebody else's. You know, it was they were basic. Uh, they were there was three of them, and when you push them up, they all three went up, mm -hmm. and they had to lock them up. And they had a okay, the front of it had a, was a shiny uh, pico locker. I mean, it, they were. Polished, 
shiny. And there was little or not. We were right by the, the front of the, the uh, number three turret because I can remember the back of uh, the back of our compartment was round because that was part of the, the mm -hmm. bar bed for the, the turret. And we had lockers on. That was it. It was really you know fairly basic. There was nothing. Uh, you couldn't go. Uh, you had to, you had to go back up to get out of there. There was no. You weren't connected to. Uh, Anything else? Mm -hmm. You had to go if you went down there. You had to go up the same ladder to get out of there because there was no. That was actually the third deck down. The first, uh, you know, it was main, main was the top deck, which was the one that was had, uh, you know, was the one you see when you take a picture of the ship. But the second one was was fully. You could walk through that. But then when you went down the third deck, that's where the compartments were, and you start getting in the work areas and. You know, they were all blacked off. You just couldn't, mm -hmm. you couldn't go through. Now you mentioned that uh, to you, I, uh, maybe in mm -hmm. retrospect, the ship seemed very antiquated. Uh, well, I mean, we knew it was. I mean, it was it was more of a show ship than a. It got to be more of a show ship than a. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I say, the Phantoms uh, airplanes were jets, and I mean, we could follow the prop jobs, which they sold. We use them back mm -hmm. in the 60s, 61, 62. We could follow it over okay, there was no problem there, but the Phantoms and the, the Jets, they were so fast at the radar, we just wouldn't go out and lock on it. We, we'd lock on it, but by the time the, it's, it would stay on it for a couple of uh, seconds, and then pretty soon you could see it start to drift down because it, it would lose it. It just couldn't follow the uh, couldn't follow the jet in. If it was going this way, we could follow it, you know, left or right, mm -hmm. but if it was coming in, the range was coming in and closing, we just uh, older equipment. I think it was a Mark Fifty Six uh, fire control. But uh, I thought it was great. I didn't realize it was as antiquated as it was. I mean, of course yeah, they were getting in, they were getting time. into what uh, they were getting into the the missiles in it because they come out right not too long. Well, I thought we were big. I really thought we were just. One of the biggest ships going until we we went on a shakedown cruise of the USS Enterprise, which I guess they just refueled again and it's still in operation. And now that ship was just amazing. That's an aircraft carrier. Mm -hmm. and your your whole super. time was on the Newport. My my whole time, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what were the officers on your ship like? The ones you had contact with? Well, like we had this Lieutenant J. G. Swanson who was at the the reunion. He's a great guy. He is, still is a great guy. He's always emailing us. He's, mm -hmm. We had, they were good officers. Some were a little tough to get along with, but we had some enlisted men who were tough to get along with too. So, but uh, you know they didn't fraternize. Mm -hmm. You know they had officers' country up forward on the on the ship. That's where they went after they were off duty and that. They didn't come back and you know fraternize with the guys with the enlisted men. How were your chiefs? Chiefs were good. Uh, first class work. There was a guy. Uh, this is a good friend of mine. In fact, I just seen him. He ended up uh, in a brig. He punched out the first class. Uh, he, he figured it was time to punch him out. One of them. He was just getting ready to. That's what he told me. He told me this. Russell Bird just told me. He says, you know, he says, I always said I'm going to get that Wheatley. He said, just before I get out, I'm going to punch him out. And he did. He punched out. He ended up in. He ended up in a brig for three days, bread and water. But uh, they were all right. Mm -hmm. Some of them were tougher than others to get along with, but. Was there a um, was there ever any kind of uh, medal that went uh, that you received for the Cuban Missile Crisis? Was you know, a, we were just talking anything it, like that. I got uh, guys were wearing ribbons in it at the some of them kept really have, because they were over Vietnam got some ribbons. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I don't actually, I think uh, for about 1979, I had sent for some something. I don't know. And they sent me some, uh, an addition to the two for, my DD 214 that said that I was entitled to, uh, uh, what do they call it? I can't, can't think of the name of it. Uh, it's sort of a general ribbon. Mm -hmm. You know, it covers everything. And like we're, a national defense? Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, they sent me the ribbon and the medal, the whole thing. But they were talking online about that before we had this reunion here at the beginning of May. And uh, one guy says he didn't know whether he qualified or not, but 
mine, they sent me a certificate. It was a, you know, that they that I could add to my 214 stating that I was eligible for it. So as far as I know, I'm not, they're mm -hmm. eligible. A lot of guys haven't, haven't got it. But. I think you're eligible for what they call the Cold War Medal also. That, that may be, I don't know, I've never really, I don't even know why I got this one. I, I, I don't know why, why I sent, sent away for it because in 1979 I really wasn't into, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. into the ship and I, I don't know, but I did Na national defense, that's what I wanted to Is there any event that stands out to you that was maybe inspirational or amusing or? A lot of amusing ones. You know, they, uh, uh, Drinking, you know, sailors, they didn't like to drink. But anyway, we're out at sea, and um, this Pete Cunningham and, and myself and Russell Burgess and all the, the three-inch guys, the three-inch battery, what they call the three-inch battery, took care of the directors and that. Now, the director on, 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 the, on the, the Mark 56, that would spin around. That, could, that would spin all day. You just crank it, and it would spin. It would hold two guys. In fact, they got a, a couple of pictures of them where they got shot up, and they, they received some fire in Vietnam. Anyway, so they had slip, what they call slipper rings, and they had to clean them. So, uh, and our director was right by the the, uh, the back side of the, uh, the the bridge where the captain hung out, right? So we get a gallon of this green alcohol. Well, I don't know nothing about alcohol other than you know beer, or whiskey, or something. The guy said you can drink that. And I said, no, yeah, yeah. He said the other stuff, the wood alcohol. He said, well, don't take much to clean these slipper rings either. He said, we'll keep a quart to clean the slipper rings. He said, we'll take the three quarts and we'll go down. And we had uh, at, you know, a blow decks, we had a couple of pop machines, Coke machine or whatever. So we got like a hundred Cokes. And we, well, this one guy got so shit faced, it was unbelievable. And then he went back up to clean the slipper rings. Well, now here, this captain, <laughs> Captain asked his first class, Miles, and he says, what's, what's wrong with that sailor? <laughs> this guy's falling all over. I mean, I mean, he was shot. <laughs> and Miles said, no, he didn't have any. He, he, was, he was strictly by the book. He said, I don't know, sir, I'll look into it. Get him, get him out of there. <laughs> and he was, Pete Cunningham was just shot. He was just shot. But there was, he, he was just the type of guy that... Uh, didn't care. He just was in the service to get his time in and get out. Nice guy. Didn't get in trouble. Luckily, my mouse and saved him. Bob Sheridan, he was another one. We used to, uh, he hated to get up. When Reverly, you know, when Reverly went off, he was always the last one out. Of course, he got rode up constantly for being, still being in the right. And I used to take the, we used to walk around, I can't remember what watch they call it, but you, you only were on it for two hours because then Reveille went and everybody was up and they, they, they secured the watch. But you had a, a club, you know, for what, I don't know, you were aboard ship, you're out at sea. But anyway, that's what, you had one. So I would take the club and start pounding on this rack. And the rack, like, was only, they were aluminum with canvas stretched across. They weren't much. So, and real thin mattress. So uh, I used to pound on that. And invariably, he would finally get up, and when he did, he used to chase me through the through the bear. I mean, through the, uh, the compartment. And uh, luckily, I got got out. <laughs> anyway, that was, it was a trip. When were you discharged? I extended a month, and because uh, the ship was going down to, uh, I don't know, down Caribbean someplace mm -hmm. to shoot. So I said, yeah, I'll extend a month. And I didn't tell, tell my mother, we, we lived up here in Buffalo, just down the street, Exxon Forest. And she called the captain and said, where's my son? <laughs> <laughs> and I got called at the captain's quarters, and he says, uh, son, he says, I appreciate you helping us out here, staying a month, he says, or so, but... Uh, you better call your mother. She's, she's worried, worried about you. She's been expecting you. Because I was supposed to get out on my 21st birthday, which was February. And I used to extend it until uh, March, middle of March. Like so, of what year was that? Uh, 64. What was your highest rank that you held? FTG3. 
Third class. When you got out, did you make uh, use of the GI Bill at all? Uh, really, not nothing. I, in fact, I haven't even wanted to sign up for any benefits from the, the VA. And I got a bunch of my my brother-in-law, a good friend of mine, and that, that I work with, told me I should, but I just never went over. I did uh, take some schooling for uh, insurance adjuster, which I never used, but I did. This was back in the early '70s, mm -hmm. and uh, but I really never took advantage of it. And I've been meaning to, because I retired here from uh, when I was American Brass and I was out of comp, who knows who got a brass company over here in military, and I had you know, 40 and a half years there. And, uh, I was, they said that you should go, I should go sign up, uh, you know, see if I can get my, maybe get some uh, prescription and it's cheaper or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I do have a decent medical plan right now, so. But uh, I should uh, I'm thinking about going over there, I just never got over there. Mm -hmm. Did you ever stay in contact with anyone that was in service with you? Yeah, Fred Sturgeon, who's on Buffalo Grove, Illinois, he, uh, he, he was a second class. Uh, then I was good friends with Russell Burgess. I, I've got ever since we went back, to, went to the, uh, when I went started going to the reunions, uh, you know, I see guys that... How many, how many reunions have you attended? Well, I went to uh, the one in Norfolk. Two in Boston, and then this one is Charleston, South Carolina. Four so far. And they're having good times. They really are. And they're having another one in two years in Baton Rouge. So. How do you think your uh, time in the service had an effect on your life? I, uh, I really do think that it, it, it straight, straight. I think it straightens you out. I really do. I mean, first of all, it's it's more regimented. I noticed my son isn't quite so regimented as I was, maybe because he wasn't in the service, I think. But, uh, you know, I mean, this, that doesn't mean he's not going to make it. He does well enough right now, very good kid, but I don't know why. I, I think it's it helped. I, I have no doubt that it helped. I think it's a, a good thing. Uh, teach you discipline. It teach you respect, I think. You know. And like you say earlier, you, you get away from the your mother and father, and you got to do a little thinking on your own. And I'll never forget, we were ta talking, and the first he said, the first time I we went to Great Lakes, the first time I we went to the mess hall, you know, you, 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 it was cold. It was a cold winter day, winter, and I'll tell you, so you run across those grinders, what they call the grinders, and the wind's whipping. And it. Anyway, we get in there. Now, we're in the north, I mean, you know, we're northern, and uh, there's a big bucket of cream of wheat. And it's and I boy this, this looks good. This I, you know I like cream of wheat. I get a bowl. I get the rest of the food. I sit down. And this kid from the south, he sits down next to me and he's watching me. He, what, what are you doing? I said, What do you mean? I, mean, I put some milk in it, a little sugar. He's you, you're not supposed to eat grits like that. I said, that ain't grits. That's his cream of wheat. Well, it was grits. <laughs> 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 I said, you're right, I just said. <laughs> now, do you have a, a photo of yourself in one of those yearbooks? Uh, yeah, there is, I think, someplace along. I just, in fact, I just, this is the one we just had. This is from South Carolina. This is, we, we were able to wear, our, uh, wear the uniform if you wanted. Some of them, because I had a line of guys up on it. What's the carrier in the background? That was the USS Yorktown. Mm -hmm. They they really have done a lot of made that thing beautiful as a sh all kinds of uh, uh, okay. right. planes and that inside. And uh, this is turret two. This is a that's, that's the one that where the actually the turret blew up. And the is there. That was during Korea or Vietnam. Vietnam, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it was. We'll have to go on the website and get some of these. Yeah, I'll tell you what, they, they have a great website. Okay. Yeah, this is our, this is Fox Division, this is the, our, see we're underneath the guns. Um, now, do you go down to the Naval Park often? Uh, not really. Uh, I think I've been down there once. Mm -hmm. And I, I really don't, 
this is the rapid fire. This is a publication that they used to have aboard ship. Right. This was in other things. I didn't even, September 2nd, 1962, we went down the Keel Canal. That was fantastic. I mean, that was really, they, um, you can see how wide it is, how close it gets. It was the peasants, I call them peasants, I guess they were, they were working in the fields, and they came riding down the, I mean, they came running down the, to the shore, and we, used to, we were throwing them candy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was really a... Okay. Well, tent. what were some of the places? Were you stationed mostly in the Caribbean, or no? Actually, we were, we were in the North Atlantic. Uh, we went to we were at NATO. Uh, we went to uh, Oslo, Norway, Portugal, uh, Sweden. Oh, let's see, uh, Sweden. Uh, where was Sweden? I can't think. Uh, North. Yeah, but I'm trying to think. Oh, oh here we go. Here we go. Here's one. It tells you exactly where we went. To, in this one here, we went to Lisbon. For Brest, France, Copenhagen, Kiel, Germany, Portsmouth, New uh, England, Amsterdam, Oslo, Arctic Circle, Keflavik, and then back to Norfolk. Mm -hmm. That was in 62, 63. Now, did you ever get anything for crossing the Arctic Circle? Yeah, a blue nose car. Yeah, and they had a big ceremony. Mm -hmm. Did you cross the equator also? No, I didn't. I, we come close, very mm -hmm. close, but we never, I would have liked them. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we didn't. The ship did itself. Uh, because one of the other guys that was, were, was aboard overlapped, you know, he came aboard and then I left, and then they went down there because the IC, he had a car, because they have all these stuff laid on tables, you know, in the mm -hmm. hospitality room. And they put, they got a lot of um, DVDs that they made up with these uh, yearbooks, you know, so you can, you can buy them at some mm -hmm. if you want. Uh, they, they, they didn't have one. 61, I guess. Well, we, I know why they didn't, because we were in dry dock at the time. So pretty much the whole year we were wrapped up. Now what did you do while the ship was in dry dock? Chip paint. <laughs> Chip paint, painted, cleaned up, fire watch, stuff like that. And, You know, there's not there ain't too much you can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was no sense in trying to, I mean, we didn't have to maintain our equipment because our equipment wasn't being used at all. Now, well, later on, this is, a, this is a Vietnam era thing, there were some race problems aboard some of the ships. Did you ever have any problems while you were on board? I had on I would never, never any problem at all with race. I never seen any drugs. I never seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. I never seen in high school, of course, maybe back in 1958, 1960, they didn't have it, I don't know, but I never seen any of that problem. Mm -hmm. But I never seen any race problems or uh, no drugs. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't looking. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for thank the you. interview. Thank you, guys.